So today's subject is really Shakespeare, uh, but to talk about Shakespeare we have to also talk a bit about the time period where uh, when he lived, and that was the Renaissance. So the Renaissance in Europe uh, happens after the Middle Ages, uh, and uh, there was a lot of interest during this time period for uh, the ancient Greeks and Romans, uh, what they had done, because people were sort of fed up fed up of the Middle Ages. They wanted to look back and see, okay, these guys seem to know what they were talking about. So the word Renaissance comes from a French word, uh, renaître, which means to be born again. So the Renaissance was sort of a period where people thought they were uh, reborn from the dark uh, Middle Ages. Uh, there was a lot of important things happening in Europe during this time. Uh, one main thing is that nation states were forming around uh, around Europe. Um, one says often that the Renaissance starts in Italy during the 15th century and Italy then wasn't just one state like it is today. Italy then consisted of a lot of small city-states who were all fighting for power in between themselves. Uh, so there was a lot of sort of battles and, and uh, power struggle going on around Europe uh, and the princes and, and kings uh, because they were mainly <laughs> men in, in this time, um, the, the rulers had to show their powers, uh, power in different ways. One way of showing your power is, of course, to have a, a big, great army, <laughs> or better yet, armies that can fight for you. Uh, other more subtle ways to show that you are the most powerful prince indeed is, for instance, fashion, dress to kill. Uh, <laughs> like it's called. Uh, so the Renaissance fashion for the higher classes tend to be very extravagant. Uh, for instance, it was common to slit your clothes uh, to show that you could afford to have uh, an expensive uh, fabric underneath the first layer of expensive fabric. So fashion was definitely one way that you could do this. Another way to show that you were the most powerful person was to have uh, artists surrounding you, artists who could paint your portraits, uh, musicians who could write songs about how fabulous you are, or uh, poets who could write poems about how fabulous you are, so that you could show that you were very powerful. Uh, and this was also the main way for artists to support themselves. Uh, during the Renaissance, book printing, for instance, had recently been discovered in, in Europe. In China, they've been doing it for centuries. Uh, but most people uh, in Europe still couldn't read or write. So even if you could print books, you know, slowly, uh, many people could, most people couldn't read them. So if you were a, a writer of some sort, you had to find someone sponsoring you, giving you money so you could write, and also protection. Uh, because sometimes you needed that as well. Uh, and this was called the patronage, uh, and, and the person sponsoring was, was called a patron. So this is how, for instance, Shakespeare had to support himself to be able to do his writing. Um, other important things happening in Europe is, of course, the Reformation, uh, because during the Middle Ages, the Catholic Church has quite a solid grip uh, of the Europe uh, but slowly, you know, Martin Luther uh, started to develop this thing that would be uh, called uh, Protestantism uh, a bit longer on. Um, and this leads to several important things. Uh, for instance, um, it becomes, again, this goes very slowly, but it becomes more acceptable to uh, talk about philosophy and natural sciences. Uh, you don't automatically have to accept everything that the church holds to be true. You can sort of discuss it and, you know, uh, think about things like how we're going to rule society. Uh, is democracy something for us? But again, this takes, you know, centuries, but it's, it's, uh, it starts, a lot of this starts uh, during the Renaissance. Um, one other difference that the Reformation gives us is that the differences between sacred and profane literature actually, uh, it actually uh, gets bigger, the differences. So, of course, Shakespeare is someone who writes uh, profane literature, so this is interesting for us. Uh, the natural arts as well as philosophy are sort of 
blooming during the Renaissance. So this is um, the time period where we will find uh, Shakespeare and we will see that he is really a child of this, this age. So this is the first, first plot. So. 